Hey guys, Miles here at Tactical Hive and coming to you from the Philippines with a very, very special guest. Six-time world champion Jethro Dionisio among his peers called Jet. And Jet doesn't even know or remember, he was my very first instructor when I was a little, little kid. And uh, he taught me how to hold a gun. After that, unfortunately, I didn't continue shooting. It was just literally one lesson and that was it. So I'm very happy to have Jet with us in this special video. And he's been gracious enough, you know, with his entire career to share the top three takeaways to excel in competition shooting. So thanks a lot, Jet. Really appreciate the time and uh, your graciousness with sharing your insights. Thank you. Thank you for, for uh having me as your guest for this episode. Awesome. Um, could you give our viewers a little bit of background? I started uh, really young. I started at the age of uh, 13, and I got into the sport through my dad. It was a sport of my dad, his, his hobby, and I used to uh, accompany him and carry his bag for him. Mm -hmm. And then all his uh, leftover ammunition, I shoot it uh -huh. at the range. I finish them for him. So that's when his friend saw me and told my dad, oh, why not get your you know, son start, started shooting? Mm -hmm. So that's how I got started. Got it. So I've been training with, with my dad ever since. Luckily, I was able to excel in the sport. My first uh, world championship was in 1990. Mm -hmm. This was the steel challenge. Yeah. Then I was able to defend it in 92 and 93. So I'm a three-time world speed shooting champion. Mm -hmm. And after that, I also shot the world shoot-off championship. I was able to uh, defend the title from uh, 92, 93, and 94. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's your sixth time, sixth time yeah. world champion there. And this is not just back in the 90s. Jet also just recently, rather recently, relatively recently, so 2019, yes. the Euro Extreme. Yes, your extreme Euro. Extreme yes, Euro. in uh, in Czech Republic. Uh -huh. uh, after the speed shooting and uh, the shoot off, I've been shooting Ipsic also. Uh -huh. I move around. I shoot here and most of the tournaments abroad in the U.S. Nationals. I've been joining the Nationals also, mm -hmm. and mostly the European Championship. That's and awesome. And I think my most recent was the 2019 before uh, before the pandemic. Uh -huh. Yeah. And look at that. So, I mean, Jet's been in it uh, since I was a little kid and still in it and uh, going strong. So, once again, Jet, thanks a lot for sharing this. So, let's, uh, I guess, let's dive right into the top three takeaways. Yep. Okay. So, my first takeaway, my very first, I think, is uh, the draw because uh, that's where it's all going to start. You know, you have to have a perfect draw, you have to have a good grip. So, you can do this through dry firing, you know, so, so every time, you hear the beep, you're, you can draw the gun from the holster with a perfect grip as much as possible. 99% of the time, you have a good grip. Mm -hmm. It's very important to start the stage with a good couple of shots, you know, good grip. So for me, that's uh, the number one. And that makes a lot of sense because um, a lot of people in competition, particularly USPSA, IPSC, they'll say that your draw speed doesn't necessarily matter that much in terms of the big picture because you're not really saving a lot of time there. It's, it's going to be in the movement. But what you bring up is extremely important in the sense that the draw is important because you need to get... Yes, you have to have a, a, like a very good grip yeah. because that will dictate the tempo of the whole course of fire. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that too because exactly what Jet said, the tempo. Yes. Because uh, another thing is I think it's kind of psychological where if you draw fast and you get a good grip, then it kind of sets the tone for everything else. Yeah. I like that, I like that. So <laughs> it's not just the speed, it's also that important point, get the good grip because if not, you're going to be messing up. Yeah, especially if you're gonna shoot like multiple shots, uh -huh. uh, speed shoot, eight shots, six rounds, you know, so uh, a good grip really helps. That makes perfect sense. Start at the very beginning. All right, my number two. Most of the time, this is taken for granted, but it's, I call it the follow through. Okay, every time you, you shoot multiple shots, especially if you're gonna shoot in a box and you have to move to the other box, most of the time we, we miss on our last shot on, the, on this particular box going to the other one. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is uh, before you let go of the last shot, you moved already, mm -hmm. okay? So for me, a follow through, a split second follow through is very important, stay on the target, Pop your second shot before you leave. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, 
you you pop and you leave at the same time. Yeah. So that's why you wonder when you get back, how come I got a miss on that target? Mm -hmm. So that's just a split second follow through. Got it. And to, for those of you who may be new to shooting or perhaps don't uh, completely understand yet, it is where, and you probably have experienced it if you've done competition, where exactly what Jet mentioned, you're like wondering why that shot missed, but you're moving before you, you really had had the discipline the to yeah, yeah to know that your sights were there exactly where you wanted to hit so this is more about having that discipline mm -hmm. that mental discipline mm -hmm. awesome yeah i think that's very important because that's happened to me a lot many times still happens all the time also <laughs> and the third one for me is uh consistency because remember if you're gonna go shoot a tournament you will shoot around 12 15 30 stages yeah so you can't be shooting like a on the fifth gear on all 10 stages, mm -hmm. you know? You gotta be consistent. Sometimes, especially if you see a stage that you're not comfortable with, you gotta lower your gear maybe to the fourth or third gear, uh -huh. yeah, just to get through that stage without a disaster. Got it. Yeah, you gotta avoid that disaster. Uh -huh. So you gotta maintain your, your cool, maintain your consistency, and I think that's more important than having a blasting one stage like 100% and then shooting the next stage to like a, a 60%. Uh -huh. So I'm more to a 90% all the way. Got it, got it. Okay, so would you say that um, there's a saying that there's a lot of, there's a whole lot of match left, right? So let's say where, let's say you're shooting 90% on all stages, yeah. or let's say you have one stage that's really bad. Let's okay. say, hypothetically, 50%. Yes. For the next stage, would you still shoot at that 90 or are you still also going to try to push it up a little bit higher, knowing you that? Can, you, you can push it up uh -huh. on stages that you feel that uh, you're comfortable with. Got it. Yeah. Got it. But on stages that are like, you know, you see some difficult shots like hostages or far targets, uh -huh. you just have to go through it and then like do, do your, do your uh, normal pace. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to like catch up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. And I asked, I mentioned that because uh, for those of you who are getting into competition shooting, as Jet mentioned, there'll be matches, you know, maybe 12 stages and on up. And a lot of people don't realize they get discouraged. They do one stage really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of match left. You still can actually place well if you're, you know, relatively well. Or if you if you have a 50% stage, you're probably not going to win the competition. But you still, you know, you can do relatively well if you're just beginning. But I, I wanted to add that to Jet's um, uh, takeaway of consistency because just in case you aren't able to keep that consistent mm -hmm. pressure, just realize you still have a whole lot of match where you can yeah. potentially catch up. Yes. Awesome. Great. So there you guys go. Three takeaways from six-time world champion. But we have a bonus takeaway for you because we were talking a little bit and we wanted to know what Jet Field set him apart from the competition. And this kind of, kind of I guess, uh, ties into takeaway three where it was a little bit of a mindset and being consistent. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jet, what's the, what is, what do you, for our viewers, what is like the, the fourth, the, the bonus takeaway? Yeah, I think the, 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 the mindset is very important, you know. Like, uh, don't get discouraged right away when you shot a bad stage. And uh, like for me, I think my advantage is I go through the course the way I, my mindset when I compete, mm -hmm. right? One good example is the recent world shoot. I think this was held in Florida. I was shooting a classic. It's a six day competition. Um, I was running first on the first three days. And then on the fourth day, something happened with my, uh, with my ammo. I got a gun malfunction or ammo malfunction. I got a zero stage on two stages. Oh, wow. So that got me worried. But uh, luckily, I was able to pull myself. Ended that tournament third overall. That's great. Yeah. So I'm saying this because that disaster didn't uh, make me lose lose hope. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it made me more more challenge mm -hmm. to perform well and and do well on on the following days. I'm glad you gave that example yeah. too because it also ties into so one mindset don't get discouraged, but it also ties into there's a whole lot of match left. Mm -hmm. So you zeroed both stages and still came up on yes. third. And it was because of you, you stayed in the match. Correct. It's not over until you fired the last shot. Yeah. yeah. Anything can happen. 
So I've watched a lot of videos and talked to a lot of other uh, professional shooters and they kind of say the same thing as well. You know, you need to have the proper mindset, but how do, how did you kind of control yourself or do you have any tips on how to control yourself? Or is that something that's just, you know, the way a person has to be? Because I know if I, if I mess up on a stage or maybe I, Maybe I use up all my ammo and I forget to plan, do my ammo planning. I want to throw the gun at the target. <laughs> you know, but so like, how do you, how do you control? For me, meditation uh, helps a lot. Uh, you really have to uh, work for it. Uh, it's not easy to, to meditate, sit down in one corner and just, you know, do nothing and think of nothing. Yeah. You know, but you have to, you have to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Meditation really helps a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. Guys, for... Awesome takeaways from six-time world champion, Jethro Dionisio. It's been awesome. And then, like, this has gone full circle. Like, again, like I mentioned, he was the, I was a little kid and he gave me my first lesson <laughs> and he doesn't even remember it. But Jet, awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.